Hello guys, this is Nobleman Science Tutors Online and uh, we are taking our class today on Total Internal Reflection Total Internal Reflection and in this class we will look at uh, application of Total Internal Reflection in, uh, in, in uh, of light rays then we also look at um, refraction in prisms and after that, we'll solve some problems. Is that okay? So, we are discussing total internal reflection. This is no mass science to source online, and uh, I remain not to be Michael. Um, I'm your online uh, video tutor on Infisys. And please, if you have not subscribed to this channel, please just click on the subscribe button, click on the notification bell so that whenever we upload a new video, YouTube will notify you. If you have any challenge, you can also reach out to us through the WhatsApp number that is showing on your screen. Is that okay? And right under this video, you will see some other links. You can click on them. It will take you to our other videos. All right. So please uh, avail yourself of this opportunity. Invite your friends. Give us a like. Also give us a thumbs up so that you can encourage us. So for our class today, we are looking at total internal reflection. If you are ready, please let's move straight to our class. So what is total internal reflection and what conditions will you say that a ray of light has been totally internally reflected? So there are some conditions that we make a ray of light to be totally internally reflected and one of them is that the ray travels from an optically dense medium e.g. glass to an optically less dense medium so for a ray of light to be totally internally reflected it must pass from a dense medium to a less dense medium take notes and two the angle of incidence in the dense medium must be greater than the critical angle so we'll look at what is a critical angle so that we'll know what we're talking about here what is a critical angle the critical angle is the angle of each density in the dense medium when the angle of refraction in the less the dense medium is equal to 90 degrees now we're going to look at all this in a diagram because all that I've said now they look like theory, but we shall see everything in a diagram shortly. Is that okay? When the, ang the angle of incidence at which the angle of refraction in the less dense medium is equal to 90 degrees is called the critical angle. So the critical angle actually is, this is describing the angle of incidence. Okay, it is describing the angle of incidence. Fine. So we will demonstrate total internal reflection and the decretive occur angle. I will show you the diagrams very shortly. But first of all, these are what you're supposed to take note of. That is, you want to demonstrate it. So place a semicircular glass block on a sheet of white paper and draw its outline with a pencil. Use pins to indicate the incident trees and the refracted trees. So we are using that semicircular glass block to show a ray that is traveling from the block to air. Because block is denser than air. Okay. So when a ray passes from the glass to air, you will have a strong refracted ray and a weak reflected ray. This one you will have. Then as the angle of incidence is gradually increase what you want to still remember is that when a ray passes from a dense medium to a less dense medium it will bend away from the normal okay so as you increase the angle of incidence the angle of refraction will also be increasing until it will become 90 degree the point where the angle of refraction is equal to 90 degree the angle of incidence at which the angle of refraction is equal to 90 degree that is what that is the angle that is called the critical angle so the angle of incidence 
in the glass medium when the refracted angle in the air medium is 90 degrees is called the critical angle now when the angle of incidence is slightly increased is slightly increased further that's if it exceeds the critical angle the refracted drill will disappear and then you will now have a strong reflected drill the incident ray is then said to be totally totally reflected back into the tensor medium it is this reflection that is known as total internal reflection it is this reflection that is known as total internal reflection so let's just go so that i will show you everything i've just mentioned them in a diagram because this one they look like theory Okay, so this is the description of all that I've said. This is diagram description of it now. This is your semicircular uh, glass block. Then this is the ray that is traveling from the glass to the air. Note that the ray, the refracted ray, is bent away from the normal. Okay, so as the ray comes in here and travels out into the air medium, you will have a strong refracted ray and a very weak reflected ray. As you increase the angle of incidence, right, as you increase it, the angle of incidence, at a, you will increase the angle of it until when this angle of refraction becomes 90 degree. The point where this angle of refraction is 90 degree, the, this angle of incidence, where the angle of refraction is 90 degree, this angle of incidence is what is called the critical angle. Look at it here. That is the critical angle, this point. This is the critical angle. The point, the angle of incidence when this one is 90 degrees is called the critical angle. Now, when you increase the angle of incidence further, you will discover that this ray now will come here. It will become totally reflected because this one will become a strong reflected ray. Okay, so this is totally reflected ray. You see that this angle of incidence has been totally reflected back into the dense medium so at this point the angle of incidence is less than critical angle at this point the angle of incidence equals to the critical angle and the refracted ray is at 90 degree then when the angle of incidence is greater than critical angle you have total internal reflection this is what you should know that at total internal reflection the angle of incidence is greater than a critical angle these are objective questions in charm and in wayek okay so now what is relationship between the refractive index and the critical angle we have said from snell's law that when a when a ray of light travels from glass to air it, it the, the refractive index equals to sign sign of the incident ray all of our sign of refracted ray now we said that for critical angle the incident angle becomes sine c while the refracted angle becomes sine 90 degree and we know that sine 90 degree is equals to one okay so from this is from glass to air also from air to glass we have that sine arrow all over sine i yeah the sign of the refracted over sign of the incident ray that is from glass to air in this particular setting so this gives you sine refraction is sine 90 degree all over sine c sine 90 degree all over sine c there's no c here again so that is sine 90 degree all over sine c okay so from since my sine 90 degrees so across to one it means that the refractive index for an air glass medium is so one all over sine c so this is relationship between then this relationship between the refractive index and the critical angle this is the relationship between the two and you have to take note of this okay so that's the relationship between the refractive index and the critical refractive index is equal to one over sine critical angle all right refractive index equals to one over sine of the critical angle okay, so we have discussed total internal reflection 
Now, in which area is this uh, phenomenon applied? That's what we are going to look at now. Application of total internal reflection in our everyday life. Okay, but before then too, I think we have a question here to solve. So let's just look at this question very quickly before we go to the application of total internal reflection. Okay, so we we'll just have a problem here to solve. The question says that a ray of light is incident at an angle of 30 degree at an air glass interface. This is it. This is it. Draw a diagram to show the deviation of the ray in the glass. Okay, fine. So I just drew the diagram here and I've also shown you the deviation. This ray is supposed to come straight, but because it is refracted, this is the angle of deviation. Okay, then this is the angle of refraction. And then this is the angle of incidence. I hope we can see that. So this is the drawing that is required. Then see, determine the angle of deviation D. So you determine the angle of deviation D here. Take refractive index of glass to be 1.5. Okay, so you are here, you are given the refractive index. So what you need to look for now in this particular question, what you will look for, you are going to look for the angle of refraction okay from the angle of refraction you can be able to solve or find the angle of deviation so basically that is it so here you have been given the refractive index is 1.5 incident angle is equals to 30 degrees so from uh, this equation, it's an I all of our sign arrow, you have that 1.5 is equals to sine 30 all of our sign arrow. So you can just make your sign arrow the subject so that you can get that. No, sign 30 is equal to 0 0.5. That will know already. So sign arrow is equal to 0 0.5 all over 1.5. Okay, so by the time you divide this out, you are going to have uh, 0 0.33. Then find the sign, the sine arrow will be inverse of sine. Arrow will now be inverse of sine of this 0.33. So by the time you work that out with your from your trigonometrical ratios or table, you have that arrow is equal to 19.5 degrees. So now you have been able to find this angle now, this angle arrow, we are fine arrow. So what we are looking for now is this uh, deviation. What we are looking for is deviation. So from this diagram, we see that, um, we see that angle of incidence is equals to arrow plus D. Because these two angles, they are vertically opposite. Since they are vertically opposite, it means that I is equals to R plus D. So D will be equals to I minus R. So just do that. I is 30 and R is 19.5. Okay, so your angle of division is equals to 30 minus 19.5. So that should give us 10.5 degrees. Okay, so I just brought this question up so that you see some, some of the way that questions are twisted. See, so questions like this are not too common, but it is good you know what is a deviation from the normal course of area of flight. This is supposed to be the normal course of the race, so the race is deviated because of refraction 
okay so the deviation is from this dotted line to this real line so please take note of that okay so let's go straight to um, the application of um, total internal reflection okay so in everyday life we see that um, total internal reflection is applied in a prison periscope you know so if you check your test will you see some pictures of some periscope here a ray of light has to be reflected totally internally for it to be able to locate an object so it is used in prison periscope to view round corners of obstacles it is it is also applied in the fish eye view in the fish eye view so a fish that is under a pond or under water can actually see the top of the horizon because of this phenomenon of total internal reflection and the fish eye view is equals to 180 degrees okay the fish eye view is equals to 180 degrees then another phenomenon that is very common that we see on a daily basis if you are a traveler is the phenomenon that is called mirage mirage is when you are traveling on a road on a tired road on a very sunny day you will see a pool of water ahead of you what is causing that pool of water it is because of this total internal reflection okay and mirage occurs when light rays from the sun bend when they pass through layers of heated air medium close to a hot ground when this occurs the surface of a hot road will at a distance appears to be to an observer as a wet and shiny pool of water now this one what happens is that as the rays of the sun are coming down you know that because the day is hot okay the air that is here will be heated and then it will not rise up so the air that is here is less than that the air that is in this place so as this tree is coming to this uh, area where the air is less than it will bend it will bend and go to the eye of an observer so as the observer is looking at the sun it will not see the shadow the shadow that it will see here will be like a pool of water okay so it is this pool of water that appears along the road that is that um, is called mirage it is called mirage because as you as you are driving you find that you will not be seeing the water it will be going further okay so that is what is called mirage. it is caused by the bending of light trees as it passes through layers of air that are of different densities okay as it as a light ray passes through layers of heated air of different density it causes this phenomenon is called mirage all right guys so i think from all that we have discussed now we can decide to solve some problems but before them to look at refraction in prisms so i don't want to solve them we just solve all the problems together yeah this is refraction in triangular prisms now when a ray of light passes through a pile this is a diagram just to show you the course of a ray of light as it passes through a triangular glass prism you see when it passes through the from air to the prism it will first of all be refracted and as it's coming out of the prism it will also be refracted again but this angle is called emergent angle okay it is called emergent angle so if you look at it as it passes through the prism the ray the refractor is bent towards the normal and as it is coming out of the prism it is bent away from the normal now this angle between this emergent ray and the normal is called emergent angle then this is refracted angle and then this is that angle now the, the deviation the deviation of this incident ray is the angle between this um, between this line this incidence ray 
that is projected backward and the emergent tree that is projected backward. Where the two angles meet is what is called the angle of minimum deviation. Then the angle of the mirror of the length of the prism is called the refractive angle. That is this angle. It's called the refractive angle. Okay. So for a triangular glass prism, the refractive angle is equals to 60 degrees. Okay, because this triangular glass ring, all the angles are equal and it is normally an equilateral triangle. So for an equilateral triangle, all the angles are equal. Right? So the angle here is 60 degrees. So this is just like an introduction to uh, refraction of light in prisms. Now, basically, what is more important is how to find the minimum deviation when a light passes through a glass prism. So these are the equations that we want to derive now just so that we we'll know how to find minimum deviation when a ray of light passes through a glass prism. Okay, so having this in our mind, see, look at this. For a ray incident on the prism at angle I, that angle of incident to the normal, the ray passes symmetrically through the prism. That's what we have discussed because that is like the ray will divide the prism into two. Fine. The ray, the refracted ray is parallel to the base. You can see it here, parallel to the base. Then the angle of deviation, this deviation is equal to two times the angle of incidence minus two times the angle of refraction. Then the refractive index is equal to two times um, the angle of uh, refraction. These two are very key that you should take note of. This one and this is two. So having known this background, this is just this are just background information. So with this background information now, we are going to derive the equation for minimum deviation and then we'll now apply them on how to solve. So take note of this that minimum deviation is equal to two i minus two arrow and refractive angle is equal to two arrow. Okay, so we'll now go on now and then see how we can derive this equation of uh, minimum deviation for a triangular glass uh, prism. Okay, so that is what we want to do now. So I can use what well, from here to when I find the relationship between this minimum deviation and the refractive index of the glass prism. Okay. Equation of minimum deviation of a triangular of a triangular glass prism. The equation of minimum deviation of light through a prism relates the refractive index, refractive angle, and angle of minimum deviation. Okay, so from what we discussed just now, we said that minimum deviation is equal to uh, 2i, 2 times angle of incidence minus 2 times angle of refraction. And we also said that the refractive angle is equal to 2 arrow. That's what to say. So if we have this in mind, we can actually substitute A into this equation, into the first one. So we can substitute for 2 arrow and put A there so that minimum deviation becomes 2 times incident angle minus the refractive angle of the mirror okay so if we do this we can equally write this question as 2i because we are looking for this angle of incidence 2i is equals to minimum deviation plus refractive angle so your i angle of incidence becomes half of this becomes dm minimum deviation plus a all over 2 okay all this divided by 2 okay so that is what we have here this is what we have here this 
I'm saying is they are the same thing. Then from the second one, we said that a where that a is equals to two arrow. So arrow is equals to what a all over two. So now we have arrow which is refractive angle, refracted angle. They will have angle of incidence. So these are the two that we have. So what is the relationship between this incident angle considering minimum deviation and the refractive index of this particular glass? What is the relationship? This is relationship from Snell's law. From Snell's law, we are told that refractive in the sequence of sine arrow of sine arrow. So we just bring this here, right? So we have sine, sine half of minimum division plus refractive angle all over, which is, this is sine i, then all over sine arrow. Sine arrow, arrow is equal to a over two, which is half a. So this is half dm plus a, all over half sine, half a okay so this equation is this equation that is called the equation of minimum deviation of a glass of a triangular glass uh, prism this equation so why i did all this for you to be able to apply it if you can derive the equation it is very easy this is where you start the derivation from and here okay so if you understand this part and here you can derive this question. So if you know how to derive it, it will be easy for you to, you don't need to cram it. You will not need to cram it anymore. You can just use it to solve any problem. Okay? You can use it to solve any problem. You don't need to cram it. So I hope this is clear. I hope this is clear. Okay? Because now I want to use it to solve some problems. So I, I know that it is when you use to solve problem that you understand it better. So I have some question that I want to solve so that we can see how we can understand this better. Okay, but please know how to derive this equation. Know that minimum division is equals to two times sine sine of the incident angle. I mean two times incident angle minus two times refracted angle, and that. Uh, the refractive angle of the prism is equal to two times refractive angle. Once you are able to know these two, it will be easy for you to derive this equation that is here. You can derive this equation at any time. Okay, so let's go and solve some problems. Okay, so here we are. Area of light experiences a minimum deviation when passing through an equilateral triangular glass prism you see it's equilateral triangular glass prism so which from here you just know that the refractive angle of this glass is 60 degrees they say calculate the angle of incidence of the ray take refractive index of glass to be equals to 1.5 so for this particular question since it is an equilateral triangle, it means that A, the refractive angle of the prism is equal to 60 degrees. Okay, that one is equal to 60 degrees. So if this is 60 degrees and they give you a um, refractive index of the glass to be 1.5, so if this is 60 degrees, then uh, we know that A is equals to 2 arrow. So arrow will be equals to what? A over 2, which is 60 over 2. And that gives us 30 degrees. Okay. So from your SNES law, we have that 
The value in this is equal to sine i all over sine arrow. So 1.5 is equal to sine is equal to sine i all over all of our sign r which is equal to 30 degrees remember we are looking for angle of incidence so we say sign i is equal to 1.5 times sign 30 degrees 1.5 times sign 30 degrees is times 30 degrees equals to 0.5 so this gives us 0 0.75 then i which is angle of incidence equals to inverse of sine 0.75 so if you find that one from your calculator you are going to have 48.6 degrees as your angle of incidence Okay, so you see how we solve this problem relating the refractive angle and then how we are able to apply this next law to solve the problem to get the angle of incidence for this uh, ray of light that experiences a uh, minimum deviation. This is another question, it's a jam question. So that a ray of light is incident on an equilateral triangular glass prism or refractive index 0 over 2. Calculate the angle through which the ray is minimally deviated in the prism. So what they are saying there is that you calculate the minimum deviation of this uh, ray of light. That is what they are asking you to do calculates the minimum deviation of the ray of light as it passes through the glass uh, prism. So how are you going to go about this? You are be given here that the triangle is an equilateral triangle. So as far as the triangle is an equilateral triangle, it means that your A is equal to 60 degrees and for what we have done before your arrow will now be equal to what 30 degrees okay your A is 60 degrees and your arrow is 30 degrees then you will be giving a um, you will be giving refractive index to be equal to 3 all over 2 Right, so from um, from Snell's law, so now we are going to apply Snell's law to find the angle of incidence. So from Snell's law, we we'll see that refracting with the sequence of sine i all over sine arrow. So this is equals to 3 all over 2 is equals to sine i all over sine 30 degrees. Okay. So sine i is equals to three times sine thirty all over two so when, by the time you work this out you are going to have this will give us you know that sine thirty is equal to 0 0.5 0 0.3 times 0 0.5 all over two so and this will give you us 0. 75 so your i 
will now be equals to inverse of sine 0 0.75. In my time, you work that out, you will have 48.6. You have that your angle incidence is equal to 48.6 degrees. Now you are looking for minimum deviation of the of the ray, and we said that minimum deviation dm is equals to two i is equals to two i minus two arrow. So minimum deviation is two bracket incident angle, which is forty eight point six minus refractive angle which is 30 degrees or multiply by 2 okay so by the time you work this side you are going to have 2 times 18 points 59 and your final result you have 37.18 degrees or approximately 37.2 to one decimal place okay so your minimum deviation is equals to this i hope you are able to follow the trend i try to follow and make the, the, this calculation to be as simple as possible first of all find the angle of incidence which is from Snell's law then use this equation to get your minimum deviation okay so this how to go about uh, these problems i hope this is clear and it's as simple as it can be i'll try another one calculate the refractive index of the material of the glass prism in the diagram below Calculate the refractive index of the material of the glass prism in the diagram below. So here you are be given minimum deviation and you are given refractive angle. And you know that for you to get um, the refractive index, you must find the angle of uh, incidence. Is that okay? You must find the angle of incidence. So now for this particular from this diagram dm is given to us from the diagram what we can deduce from it that dm is equals to 30 degrees a is equals to 60 degrees okay so and we from this we didn't they didn't give us this this is what we are looking for now we know that from this equation dm is equals to 2i minus a okay 2i minus a so that 2i is equals to dm plus a and i is equals to dm plus a all over 2 all right so if we substitute into this equation we'll have that dm is 30 degrees a is equals to 60 all over 2 so your i be equals to 90 divided by 2 which is equals to 45 degrees so now we have gotten uh, the angle of incidence um, from Snell's law we are told that refractive angle is equal to sine i all over sine arrow so if you substitute this equation we have sine 45 degrees all over sine 30 degrees from your trigonometrical ratio sine 45 degrees is equals to 1 over square root 2 
and sine 30 degrees so close to 1 all over 2. So we can have that, we can write it that way, that's 1 all over square root 2 all over 1 over 2. So this one you can rewrite it to be 1 all over square root 2 multiplied by 2. So if you solve this equation using sort, for this one you write it is 2 all over root 2. So sodically, you want to solve it sodically, you rationalize this equation, this will be 2 over root 2 all over that, all over root 2. Okay, so this gives you 2 root 2 all over 2. This we cancel at so that the refractive index of this glass will become 2. So refractive index equals to root 2. So depending on the way or the question that you are asked, why I'm going through all this for you to know how to maneuver. So with this question that we have solved so far, I don't think you will have any problem solving any question that has to do with minimum deviation, critical angle, and all that. That's okay. So that is it. So guys, this is your test page. I've been able to um, uh, filter out some questions. You can see check other test books. You will see more questions on this minimum deviation refractive angle critical angle and on that please try to solve all these problems they will help you to get more understanding of what you are learning is that okay so thanks guys this is where we are stopping for this class and um, if i leave please subscribe to our channel give us a like if you like what we are doing give us a thumbs up Click on notification bell so that when we upload a new video, YouTube will notify you. We thank you and we appreciate you. Please reach out to us through the WhatsApp number that is showing on your screen. This is No Man Science Tutors Online. We are here to help you to become a better you in physics. So thanks so much for your time. Please don't forget to read your books. Read your books. That's okay. Thank you. See you in our next class.